Welcome to the Western Approach. You're a long way from the Winter Palace now. Between the sandstorms and the vicious wildlife, we haven't made it far out here. One of my men got too close to a poison hot spring and gave me a slightly delirious report of a high dragon flying overhead. In short, this might just be the worst place in the entire world. Be careful out there. Well, it's good to know what I'm in for. Sorry, I don't have more for you. We intercepted a venatory messenger and, uh, persuaded him to give up the orders he was carrying. We have them here. This entire place. It just feels like something's not right. Be careful. We need it, Inquisitor. I fear they've already started the ritual. It has to be blood magic. I hope we can stop them before more people get hurt. You take point. I'll guard your backs. Wait! No! Warden Commander Clarell's orders were clear. This is wrong! Remember your oath. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. In death. I'm sorry. Sacrifice! Oh. Visitor, what an unexpected pleasure. Lord Livius Eremond of Virantium, at your service. You are no warden. But you are. The one Clarell let slip. And you found the Inquisitor and came to stop me. Shall we see how that goes? Wardens, this man is lying to you. He serves an ancient Tevinter Magister who wants to unleash a blight. That's a very serious accusation. Let's see what the Wardens think. Wardens, hands up. Hands down. Corypheus has taken their minds. They did this to themselves. You see, the calling had the Wardens terrified. They looked everywhere for help. Even to Vinter. Yes, and since it was my master who put the calling into their little heads, we in the Venatori were prepared. I went to Clarell full of sympathy, and together we came up with a plan. Raise a demon army, march into the deep roads, and kill the old gods before they wake. Corypheus marching across Orlais with an army of demons. That was in the future I saw at Redcliffe. And now you know how it begins. Sadly for the Wardens, the binding ritual I taught their mages has a side effect. They are now my master's slaves. This was a test. Once the rest of the Wardens complete the ritual, the army will conquer Hades. So Corypheus influenced the Wardens and made them do this ritual. <laughs> made them? No. Everything you see here, the blood sacrifices to bind the demons, the Wardens did it of their own free will. Fear is a very good motivator, and they were very afraid. You should have seen Clarell agonize over the decision. Burdens of command, I suppose. Why would the Wardens try to kill the old gods? A blight happens when dark spawn find an old god and corrupt it into an archdemon. If someone fought through the deep roads and killed the old gods before they could be corrupted, poof, no more blights, ever. The wardens sacrifice their lives and save the world. Although I fear history will remember them a little differently now. 
Why would Chlorel risk using demons? Demons need no food, no rest, no healing. Once bound, they will never retreat, never question orders. They are the perfect army to fight through the deep roads. Or across all A. Now they are bound to my master. Do you really want to see the world fall to the Blight? What do you get out of this? The Elder One commands the Blight. He is not commanded by it, like the mindless Darkspawn. The Blight is not unstoppable or uncontrollable. It is simply a tool. Somebody's certainly a tool. As for me, while the Elder One rules from the Golden City, we, the Venatori, will be his god kings here in the world. Release the Wardens from the Binding and surrender. I won't ask twice. No, you won't. The Elder One showed me how to deal with you in the event you're foolish enough to interfere again. That mark you bear, the anchor that lets you pass safely through the veil, you stole that from my master. He's been forced to seek other ways to access the Fae. When I bring him your head, his gratitude will be... Ah! their ritual, the mages are slaves to Corypheus. And the Warden Warriors? Of course. Sacrificed in the ritual. What a waste. Araman lied to the Wardens. They were trying to prevent future blights. With blood magic and human sacrifice. The Wardens were wrong, Hawk. But they had their reasons. All blood mages do. Everyone has a story they tell themselves to justify bad decisions. And it never matters. In the end, you are always alone with your actions. I believe I know where the Wardens are, Your Worship. Eriman fled in that direction. There's an abandoned Warden fortress that way. Adamant. Good thinking. The Warden and I will scout out Adamant and confirm that the other Wardens are there. We'll meet you back at Skyhold. Inquisitor, come have a drink. To killing a high dragon like warriors of legend. What exactly am I supposed to be drinking? Maras Lok. What does that mean? It means drink. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Put some chest on your chest. Mm, that little gurgle right before it spat fire. And that roar. What I wouldn't give to roar like that. The way the ground shook when it landed. The smell of the fires burning. Toss it a thon hal -sam. You know, Kunari hold dragons sacred. Well... As much as we hold anything sacred. <laughs> Here, your turn. That thing you just said, you shouted it during the fight, too. What does it mean? Oh, Tarsadathan Halsam. Closest translation would be I will bring myself sexual pleasure later while thinking about this with great respect. You shouted that while it was breathing fire at us. I know, right? Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Yes, the second cup's easier. Most of the nerves in your throat are dead after the first one. Atashi, the glorious ones. That's our word for them. Atashi. Why do you think the Kunari think of dragons that way? Well, you know how we have horns. 
We kind of look more dragony than most people. Maybe it's that. But a few of the Ben Hasrath have this crazy old theory. See, <clears throat> the Tamathrans control who we mate with. They breed us for jobs like you'd breed dogs or horses. What if they mixed in some dragon a long time ago? Maybe drinking the blood, maybe magic, I don't know. But something in that dragon we killed... <sighs> ...spoke to me. It's a shame we had to kill the dragon. Damn good fight. Dragons are the embodiment of raw power. But it's all uncontrolled. Savage. So... They need to be destroyed. Taming the wild. Order out of chaos. <laughs> Have another drink. <laughs> nice. To dragons. <laughs> <laughs> mm. To finding the biggest, baddest things in the world, and showing them that we're badder. Anon. They're looking at assault options now in the war room. Thanks for coming. You did well, Varric. The Inquisitor is just who we need. Ah, it's, it's been great. Murderous wardens, archdemon attacks, plenty of blood mages and crazy Templars. Just like home. I know how much you hated leaving Kirkwall. This is the ass end of Thetas. You know they eat snails here? Still, I, I think I, uh, I need to finish this out. And if it weren't for me and Bartrand, none of this would have happened. So much for changing our lives. And that's what happens when you try to change things. Things change. You can't always control how. I tracked the Wardens to Adamant Fortress, Inquisitor. Your specialists have my full report. Adamant Fortress has stood against the Darkspawn since the time of the Second Blight. Fortunately for us, that means it was built before the age of modern siege equipment. A good trebuchet will do major damage to those ancient walls. And thanks to our Lady Ambassador... Lady Cyril of Jader was pleased to lend the Inquisition her sabots. They've already delivered the trebuchets. That is the good news. And the bad news? Eremond called the ritual at the Western Approach a test. He may already be raising his army of demons in the fortress. The Inquisition forces can breach the gate, but if the Wardens already have their demons... I found records of Adamant's construction. There are choke points we can use to limit the field of battle. That's good. We may not be able to defeat them outright. But, if we cut off reinforcements, we can carve you a path to Warden Commander Clorel. Taking this fortress is going to get a lot of good soldiers killed. Our soldiers know the risks, Inquisitor. And they know what they're fighting for. It'll be hard fought, no way around it. But we'll get that gate open. It's also possible that some Wardens may be sympathetic to our cause. The warriors may be willing to listen to reason, though I doubt they will turn against Clorel directly. The mages, however, are slaves to Corypheus. They will fight to the death. We've built the siege engines and readied our forces, Inquisitor. Give the word, and we march on Adamant. <laughs>
through! All right, Inquisitor. You have your way in. Best make use of it. We'll keep the main host of demons occupied for as long as we can. I'll be fine. Just keep the men safe. We'll do what we have to, Inquisitor. Warden Stroud will guard your back. Bork is with our soldiers on the battlements. She's assisting them until you arrive. There's too much resistance on the walls. Our men on the ladders can't get a foothold. If you can clear out the enemies on the battlements, we'll cover your advance. Warden! We are betrayed by the very world we have sworn to protect! The Inquisition is inside, Clarell. We have no time to stand on ceremony. These men and women are giving their lives, Magister. That might mean little in Tavinta, but for the Wardens, it is a sacred duty. Are you ready, Jaina? I came to save people from the Blight! And so you shall, child. Stop them! We must complete the ritual! Chlorel! If you complete that ritual, you're doing exactly what Aramond wants! What? Fighting the Blight? Keeping the world safe from Darkspawn? Who wouldn't want that? And yes, the ritual requires blood sacrifice! Hate me for that if you must, but do not hate the Wardens for doing their duty! We make the sacrifices no one else will. Our warriors die proudly for a world that will never thank them. And then your Tevinter ally binds the mages to Corypheus! Corypheus? But he's dead. These people will say anything to shake your confidence, Corel. Bring it through! more than my share of blood magic. It is never worth the cost. I trained half of you myself. Do not make me kill you to stop this madness. Be ready with the ritual, Clarell. This demon is truly worthy of your strength. Listen to me. I have no quarrel with the Wardens. I have spared those I could. I don't want to kill you, but you're being used! And some of you know it, don't you? The mages who've done the ritual? They're not right. They were my friends, but now they're like puppets on a string. You cannot let fear sway your mind, Warden Chernoff. He's not afraid. You are. You're afraid that you ordered all these brave men and women to die for nothing. I honor your bravery, my brothers and sisters. But this is not the way. You have been tricked. Clarell, we have come so far. You're the only one who can do this. Perhaps we could test the truth of these charges to avoid more bloodshed. Or perhaps I should bring in a more reliable ally. My master thought you might come here, Inquisitor! He sent me this to welcome you!
fight the Grey Wardens. <laughs> you did that to yourself, you stupid bitch. All I did was dangle a little power before your eyes, and you couldn't wait to get your hands bloody. Where are we? <laughs> we... we were falling. Is this... Are we dead? No. The Inquisitor used the mark to open another rift. We fell through. I believe... we're in the Fade. It looked much different the last time I was here. Perhaps it's because we're here physically, instead of just dreaming. The stories say you walked out of the Faded Haven. Was it like this? I don't know. I still can't remember what happened the last time I did this. Well, whatever happened at Haven, we can't assume we're safe now. That huge demon was right on the other side of that rift Aramund was using, and there could be others. Ah, oh, this is shitty. I'll fight whatever you give me, boss. But nobody said nothing about getting dragged through the ass end of Demon Town. In our world, the rift the demons came through was nearby. In the main hall. Can we escape the same way? It sounds like our best option. There, let's go. I greet you, Warden. And you, Champion. Divine Justinia. Most holy. Cassandra. Cassandra, you knew the Divine. Is this really her? I... I don't know. It is said the souls of the dead pass through the fate and sometimes linger, but... We know the spirits lie. Be wary, Inquisitor. I fear the Divine is indeed dead. It is likely we face a spirit, or a demon. You think my survival impossible? 
Yet here you stand alive in the Fade yourselves. In truth, proving my existence either way would require time we do not have. Surely you can understand our concerns and explain what you are. I am here to help you. You do not remember what happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, Inquisitor. No, I don't. The memories you have lost were taken by the demon that serves Corypheus. It is the nightmare you forget upon waking. It feeds off memories of fear and darkness, growing fat upon the terror. The false calling that terrified the Wardens into making such grave mistakes? It's work. I would gladly avenge the insult this nightmare dealt my brethren. You will have your chance, brave Warden. This place of darkness is its lair. Corypheus seems to have a lot of demons at his disposal. How does he command so many? I know not how he commands his army of demons. His power may come from the Blight itself, but the Nightmare serves willingly, for Corypheus has brought much terror to this world. He was one of the Magisters who unleashed the first Blight upon the world, was he not? Every child's cry as the Archdemon circles. Every Dwarf's whimper in the deep roads. The Nightmare has fed well. Can you help us get out of the Fade? That is why I found you. When you entered the Fade at Heaven, the demon took a part of you. Before you do anything else, you must recover it. These are your memories, Inquisitor. Need to clear a path. Go, I'll cover you. No, you were right. The Grey Wardens caused this. A warden must. A warden must help them rebuild. That's your job. Corypheus is mine. Stroud. Inquisitor, it has been an honor. For the water! He was right. Without the Nightmare to control them, the Mages are free and Corypheus loses his demon army. Though, as far as they're all concerned, the Inquisitor broke the spell with the blessing of the Maker. They came out of this alive. As far as I'm concerned, they can tell whatever stories they like. I suppose you're right. Inquisitor, the Archdemon flew off as soon as you disappeared. The Venatori Magister is unconscious but alive. Cullen thought you might wish to deal with him yourself. As for the Wardens, those who weren't corrupted helped us fight the demons. We stand ready to help make up for Clarell's tragic mistake. Where is Stroud?
Warden Stroud died, striking a blow against a servant of the Blight. We will honor his sacrifice, and remember how he exemplified the ideals of the Grey Wardens. Even as Corypheus and his servants tried to destroy you all from within. Inquisitor, we have no one left of any significant rank. What do we do now? You stay and do whatever you can to help. Stroud died for the ideals of the Wardens. In war, victory. And we are still at war. Do you believe the Wardens can still help? I do, Your Worship. You're still vulnerable to Corypheus, and possibly his Venatori. But there are plenty of demons that need killing. After all that, you give them yet another chance? While they do that, I'll inform the Wardens at Weishaupt what's happened. Best they not get caught off guard. Thank you, Your Worship. We will not fail you. Good luck, Inquisitor. It's been an honor. And take care of Varric for me. Ryland's men will monitor the situation. Yes, sir. We'll begin preparations at once. In the meantime, we'll send soldiers to assist with the relief effort. That will be all. Sir. There's always something more, isn't there? Wishing we were somewhere else? <laughs> I barely found time to get away before. This war won't last forever. When it started, I... Well, I hadn't considered much beyond our survival. But things are different now. What do you mean? I find myself wondering what will happen after... When this is over, I... I won't want to move on. Not from you. I... I don't know what you... That is... If you... Cullen, do you need to ask? I suppose not. I want... Ah. Dream? They always are. Without Lyrium, they're worse. I didn't mean to worry you. Despite the dreams, is it still a good morning? Now the Grey Wardens, both devoted their lives to fighting evil. Now they serve it. If I was possessed by a demon, would you...? Please, don't ask me this. I think I know the answer. I don't think you do. It's not that simple, and I... I would rather not think of it. Is there anything I should know? Many of our recruits viewed the Grey Wardens as heroes. Blackwall's presence is helpful. Knowing there's one Warden immune to corruption has given people hope. Corypheus's grasp is not inescapable. That's all for now. Another time, then. 
Writing does not come naturally to me, as I'm certain you can imagine. Are you all right? You seem... very intent. I am. This needs to be done before I forget. As if written by a dim-witted child. <sighs> Historians will one day ask what happened at Adamant Fortress, in the Fade. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. It must be recorded. That's an excellent idea, Cassandra. I certainly thought so, until I started writing. I still don't know what to say about the Spirit of the Divine. I saw her there, heard her voice, yet I cannot claim with certainty it was really her. The Chantry teaches us that the souls of the dead pass through the Fade, so it could have been her, yet even so. Do you really think it could have been her? A ghost? A ghost. A remnant of her hopes and memories. Her lingering will to do good. Those things are all possible. Nobody knows for certain what happens after we die. A spirit could have assumed her form. But why? It helps you. As Justinia herself would have. I believe it was the Divine. She helped us one last time. I hope that's true. I want to believe it. When I realized we were physically in the Fade, I was terrified, almost beyond reason. The last time such a thing happened, we created Darkspawn. We created Corypheus. The world needs to know the truth this time. No more legends lost to the ages. Want a drink? I've a hankering for company. When I was a boy, there were these urchins who roamed the streets near my father's house. One day they found a dog, a wretched little thing. It came to them for food. I caught it, tied a rope around its neck, and strung it up. Do you know what I did? You stopped them? Cut the dog down? I did nothing. Not a damn thing. It was crying. I saw the kicking legs, the neck straining and twisting, and I turned around went inside and closed the door. I could have told my father or alerted someone. I didn't. I just pretended it wasn't happening. You said you were just a boy. I was old enough to know the dog was suffering and that it was wrong. I may as well have tied the noose myself. We could make the world better. It's just easier to shut our eyes. Nothing worth doing is easy. <laughs> Look at you. You would have done the right thing. We're lucky there are people like you in the world. There's always some dog out there. Some fucking mongrel that doesn't know how to stay away. <coughs> Again. <coughs> Again. Uh, come on! This is why the Kuhn doesn't like women fighting. I should have asked Cullen. Uh, good one. <laughs> Perhaps you can take over. Gunari training exercise to master your fear. Been a while since I needed it, but that nightmare demon was... <sighs> big. 
Can you explain why I'm supposed to hit you with this stick? Probably, if I try. It did involve a lot of Kunari words, though. Just hit me with the stick, all right? I need to get over this demon crap. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. Damn demon. Who's stuck in the fade, huh? That nightmare wanted to tear you in half. Not a chance. Piece of fade, piece of crap. And who killed you? That's right. Iron fucking ball. Oh, oh, I needed that. Thanks, boss. And that works for you. Yep. All right, then. Heard what went on in that fade thing. What you think went on. Can't even start to believe that business. I think a lot of people are having trouble with what went on there. People going on about visions and piss when real people are gone. Dead, probably. Stroud, yeah? Lost a serious mustache there. And in trade, a busted down bunch of wardens. And they're always weird. Usually, bad stuff happens first, so you're glad when the hero shows up. But wardens are the wrong way round. They're the good thing that means a bad thing is about to happen. Like in Denerim, when the blight ended. A lot happened in Denerim. What did you see? People talked a lot about this one warden. There was a big fight and they died, or I don't know, maybe they didn't. The hero of Ferelden? You forget the hero of Ferelden. That was ages ago, 10 years. I was playing with small painted boxes and burying stuff I stole. I remember more people cringing about magic than blight. Wardens were an excuse for your stuff to go missing. Blackwall's nice though, different from the adamant ones. Need more like him. Inquisitor. I am... I have been thinking. You remember everything now, yes? The explosion at Haven. The Fade. Escaping the breach. In your report, you said Justinia was with you. But only you emerged in the end. Why? Why were you the only survivor? She knew it was either her or me. And she wanted me to live. Of course. Of course she did. That's just like her. Her message to me. <laughs> I failed you too. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Did you say anything else? Anything at all? Please, if you remember. I'm sorry, Liliana. That was it. There are no answers in the fate. Only illusions. A warped mirror. Justinia has never failed me. I was her left hand. Now she's dead. I failed her. You have remarkably little here on early to winter history. All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio, trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on whether Divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. That's the Dorian I know, critiquing every book in my library. I wouldn't have to if you could find some rebellious heretic archivist to join the cause. Are there rebellious archivists? Other than you, that is. If Corypheus ever starts burning masterworks of literature, I'm sure a few will pop up. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? When everyone returned, they told us about your tumble into the Abyssal Rift. You went into the Fade. Physically went in. Are you... all right? Stroud. It's gone. The Fade is an ordeal under normal circumstances. To be the only real thing there, beyond description. 
That you made it out at all is a miracle. You do realize this feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blight. In comparison. So, I should be happy I accomplished something so grand? Concern, more like. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. Who knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed? Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. That's a good idea. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... this I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus' real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle biter with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck. I knew Stroud, you know, not well. He led the Wardens near Kirkwall. Not many people knew who he was, but the man was a hero when it mattered. He wasn't the first good man to fall to Corypheus. He won't be the last. This story's no good for heroes. Some of us heroes will make it. We're just too amazing to die. Well, if we're both still standing at the end of all this, I'll buy the drinks. <sighs> Hawk asked me to tell everyone back in Kirkwall where she's going. Fenris needs to know. Maker, I'm glad I won't be doing this in person. I'd better write some letters. Excuse me. Before you is service of the Minrata Circle of Magi. You met him and his venatory in the Western Approach. He admits to working for Corypheus, raising monsters and using magic for conquest. He also used his connections to smuggle magical artifacts out of the Approach, without his master's consent. Whether or not he's loyal to Corypheus has no bearing on his crimes. I was hired by a third party. I've no loyalty to him. Might you find that useful, Your Worship? I'm sorry, are you attempting to bargain with us? Bargain? I plead. I throw myself on your mercy. I also have friends in Tavinta who owe me large debts. Leave what happened in the approach behind us, Inquisitor, and I can put them all at your disposal. Liliana will assign agents to you. I expect them to inform me that you have been forthright. If you want redemption, you'll have to earn it. I can more than pay my keep, Inquisitor. Thank you. Another of the lingering pains of Adamant, Your Worship. Sir Ruth is a senior warden of the Order. She was one of the many who slit the throat of another to bind a demon. She does not contest this. In fact, she surrendered to us. She requests no mercy. She wants the public justice of the headman's axe. You're very serious about this. Is more death the answer? There is no excuse for my actions. I murdered another of the Order. That blood marks me more than the Blight ever could. Accepting their actions while thralls of Corypheus, many treaties allow wardens any extreme if it opposes the Blight. I can't do it. I can't use the greater good to justify my crimes, as if it would create a future I could be a part of. It is wrong that this broke me. I've done worse with full sanction. I can do nothing except be an example of the cost. The Inquisition stands for faith. Our work has greater purpose. 
Sometimes we need a reminder. Sir Ruth, the Herald of Andraste forgives you in her name. Find peace in that. Your Worship, I... I will try. Adamant's influence continues, Your Worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. Many places felt the pain of Adamant. You will answer for a great deal. I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Taventa, rightful ruler of every piece of ground you trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. Lord Aramond, any protection you thought you had has apparently been withdrawn. You will die by my hand. Petty actions. Truth lies in the next world. And you once described adamant to me adamant is and always will be the order he said a guardian on the edge of the abyss the lone soul that stares into oblivion and doesn't waver that's what warden commander Clorel tried to be well they all tried to be i'm told her wardens never wavered they went to their deaths willingly they died for us and corypheus twisted their sacrifice to make it his own We stopped him. We saved most of the Wardens. But not all of them. And they died thinking they were doing something good. There's no one to blame but Corypheus. Even Clorel's intentions were righteous. Her desire to protect was so great it led her astray. It's not right. To want to do good, to be good, and have that turned against you. Don't think of what went wrong. Think of their intentions, their sacrifice. Honor their selflessness. Clorel made mistakes, but she was a great woman, and she died a great woman. It's not the armor or the trappings of the Order. It's not the... joining at the heart of it. All a Warden is, is a promise. To protect others, even at the cost of your own life. Noble Sists are arguing over Vershel. Land swapped. They're getting little people beat up. So I need you to go to your big table and send some people to walk through town. Just walk through. Just walk through. Easy, right? Was this a tip from one of your friends? Not a Jenny. Just normal angry people getting sick of being in the middle. I don't usually hear about things this far away. But having a friend like you is like getting really big ears. Bigger ears, I guess. Shut up. Who is asking for this? I'm asking. Because I heard people complain it. See, when nobles fight, it's not them. It's their little people stuck in the middle. It's like a polite war, so no one pays attention. But if you march through, the people up top feel threatened too. Stuff like this is always happening. Good sovereigns to be made if you're one of the few who notice. What does the Inquisition get out of this? Nobles think everyone is out to get them. So when your helmets march through, both sides will think the other's your ally. Both get scared, both make deals. Worst case, you get a little bump among the people just because they see you acting. Can't promise anything, but something will happen. Just like always. 
All right, Sarah. I'll have someone look into it. It's fun, right? Being important without doing a thing. Well, not much of a thing. Not everything has to be torn skies and ancient assholes. Every little thing makes a difference somewhere. Still waiting to go get that reward for marching through Vachelle. Got something against free money? I'm ready if you are. Always, yeah. My favorite part, this. Let's go see what friends can get us. This is weird. What? I was expecting a village or something. The people that leave me stuff don't trek out to places like this. Give me a city and I'll give you a tour, but surprise, surprise, I don't know stupid woods or ruins. What's that? Don't hurt me. Harmond made me do it. Ray, things have gone sour, as they do. No, no, it, it has to go right or he'll kill me for the marching. It wasn't my fault. You were the one with the rumor out of Vachelle. My friend. You're her. You're the one he's waiting for. It's her. She's here. Red Jenny. Yeah, that wasn't so hard, was it? We identified the confusion, and we worked past it. I'm Lord Pell Harmond. I do hope, Inquisitor, that you continue to respond to reason. After all, your choice of company is hardly virtuous. Freaking user you are. Another noble prick who punches down. We're the same, you and I. Well, that is overstating it. You are nothing like me. But we both need people. You want to talk now, but Sarah is my ally. You attacked her friends. Come now. You know how much her meddling cost me? Because apparently you were complicit. Honestly, previous to this very moment, I thought you'd also been tricked by these red jennies. You're of noble birth, and as Inquisitor, you are more than a peer. I attacked them on behalf of us both. Ass biscuit. <sighs> Quiet. Inquisitor, Herald, I don't want to be your enemy. I'm barely invested in being hers. If you are willing to recognize an opportunity, we could be exceptional partners. No deal. But no more killing, either. Just get out of here. Surprising. Disappointing, but also welcome over the alternative. Like fun it is. Don't worry. I'm as good as dead to you. I certainly won't be seeking out more of your people. Be sure to return the favor. You want, because I'm still angry. Angry face. You let that pisshead go. You know he's just gonna play his game somewhere else. That's what they do. I did what I thought was best. It wasn't ideal, and I apologize. What? Really? Really. Well, good then. Right, what do you mean? Because I am really not used to that acceptance thing you're doing right there. I don't want this to get in the way of you staying. I like having you here. I could see that, Lady Trevelyan. I could. You're on my good side. We'll see if it lasts. A message from Divine Justinian. That's a shock. You all right reading it? Thank you for the concern, Inquisitor. But I am. This message was written months, perhaps even years ago, to be delivered to me if she died. I've heard of such contingency plans. A sudden death often leaves loose ends. I'm to go to Valence, a small village on the waking sea. There is something hidden there. You know what you're looking for? The Divine was a powerful woman who used her position to obtain all sorts of things. Whatever she hid in Valence would very likely benefit the Inquisition and must be kept from falling into the wrong hands. If I'm lucky, she will have instructions for me. Why hide things in Valence? What's so special about it? Justinia was revered mother at the Chantry there for many years before she became the Divine. It is a place that holds great meaning for her. I'll help in whatever way I can. Wonderful. I was hoping you would agree to come with me to Valence. One more thing. If what is hidden in Valence is as valuable as I think, we're not going to be the only ones looking for it. I shall meet you at the Chantry in Valence.
Try not to delay. It's just as I remember it. You didn't tell me you'd been here before. After the blight ended, I came here to see Justinia. She was just Dorothea then, a revered mother. It's peaceful here. You must have good memories of this place. It was a place of comfort. It is good to see it still untouched by Corypheus. Liliana, is that you? Sister Natalie, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Val Rayo. No, I've been here since Justinia died. This place makes me feel like... like she's still with us. Inquisitor, this is Natalie, a trusted friend. Wait, Inquisitor? You... you brought the Inquisitor here? My lady, forgive me for not recognizing you earlier. I wish more people would fail to recognize me. Oh, uh... I see. Natalie, listen. There is something hidden here. Something Justinia left for me. Oh, really? What is it? I don't know, but we'll find it. I'm curious to see what brought us all here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good old Liliana was playing you the whole time. Didn't you realize? They never sing the benedictions here on Fridays, Natalie. Something so simple. And you got it so wrong. I wanted to believe, but you were lying from the start. Keep that pretty mouth shut if you must, dear. You've already told me everything I need to know. The prickle with burrs on your hem, talking about the sun rising through the breach. It all points to a single place. Morel in the Dells, Grand Cleric Victoire's Bastion. She sent you, didn't she? Victoire was always an opportunist. Who is this Grand Cleric? I've never heard of her. An experienced cleric. She never agreed with Justinia, but kept her ideas to herself. I suppose now, with Justinia dead, she thought she could make her move. I want to know what this Grand Cleric planned here. She sent Natalie here to see what Justinia was hiding, no? The Inquisition has turned Thedas away from the true Chantry. It must be stopped. Stop us? He must be joking. Mother Victoire is well loved by many. The Inquisition has more enemies than you know. And Victoire thinks she can ally with them. Good work. We know the name of our enemy. That's half the battle won. Exactly. Kill me then. I am not afraid to die for my beliefs. At least I still know what I believe. Release her, Liliana. She's no threat. The Grand Cleric? She is one woman. We are the Inquisition. The Inquisitor has spoken. Run. Tell your mistress that she has a choice. The Inquisition is coming. No! This can't be it. There's nothing here. It's not what you expected. That doesn't mean it's nothing. There's a message carved in the lid. The left hand should lay down her burden. She... she's releasing me. The Divine has a long reach, but it is always her left hand that stretches out. A thousand lives, a thousand deaths. Her commands, but my conscience that bore the consequences. She apologized in the Fade. She said she failed you. This is what she meant. All this time, Justinia carried the fear that she was using me. Just like I'd been used in the past. But Marjolaine's games were trifles. 
Justinia gambled with the fate of nations. She needed me. No one else could have done what I did. She knows that. Then you have to let it go. Let her go. You don't owe her anything anymore. If it were not for you, I would have killed Natalie and called it a good thing. Thank you for showing me what was right when I couldn't see it for myself. There are things that must be said, but not here. I will see you back at Skyhold. I'm told that Ambassador Montillier is pleased with the restraint you showed in Valence. Ugh, she's positively beside herself. I will never hear the end of it. Niceness before knives, Liliana. Haven't I always told you? Will that be all, my lady? For now. How have you been feeling since Valence? Good. Wonderful. Valence was something of a rebirth for me. If you hadn't been with me at Valence, I would have killed Natalie. I'd have told you that I didn't have a choice. But there is always a choice. I am more than this. I am more than what Justinia made me. What does this mean for my Inquisition? Will you still be my spy master? Of course. I would not give up my post. Not after everything we've built. I just know now that I shouldn't ignore my heart. Mercy is not always a weakness. Do you resent Justinia for what she did? How can I when there is so much between us? When she gave her life for peace? No. I believe her intentions were pure. Most intentions are. You've exceeded her. She could never have imagined the power you now hold. And now I will know how to use that power wisely. I have to stay true to who I really am, before a spymaster, left hand or bard. I almost lost myself. This, this is just, it's something to keep their hands busy. I'm grateful you tracked me down when you did. As exciting as wandering the woodlands was, this is better. It's good to be part of something so important. Something that could change things. I'm pleased that you feel that way. Makes me sound like a Chantry sister, doesn't it? Some giddy new initiate. But so be it. I suppose you've earned my loyalty. And girlish enthusiasm. You are who you choose to follow. Someone told me that once. Took me years to understand what he meant. There's wisdom in that. It was a chevalier who said those words to me. A powerful man, but never without honor. A true knight. We met as competitors in the Grand Tourney. He left me with that advice before we parted. Put aside his own ambitions to help me win the melee. I don't think I even thanked him. What is this Grand Tourney? You've never heard of it. The Grand Tourney of the Free Marches. It's a spectacle. Song, dance, wine, every amusement you can imagine. <laughs> but the greatest part is the contest of arms. Prove yourself in the Grand Tourney, and you can make your fortune. How did he help you? There were a hundred men on the field, each one fighting for himself. The knight and I had forged an alliance. It was just the two of us, and we took all comers. The goal? Down as many opponents as possible. He always let me deliver the final blow. That was generous of him. He said I stood to gain everything, while well, he'd lose nothing. When it was over, he offered to mentor me. To teach me to become a chevalier like him. And I, young and stupid, turned him down flat. I just won the melee at the Grand Tourney. I didn't need him. I should have gone with him. Perhaps things could have been different. You're here now. A Grey Warden. It worked out. I suppose it did, didn't it? But I'm older. Hopefully wiser. And I think I've chosen the right person to walk with. The Spy Master has confirmed it. Blackwall is gone. 
He would not have left unless he had a good reason. It is not for me to speculate on Blackwall's motivations. Sister Leliana had us search the Warden's quarters. Not much to find, except this. It was missing from last week's reports. I don't know what Blackwall's interest in this particular matter is, but it could be a good place to start. Cyril Mornay, for your crimes against the Empire of Orlais. For the murders of General Vincent Callier, Lady Lorette Callier, their four children, and their retainers, you are sentenced to be hanged from the neck until dead. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Very well. Who's this man to Blackwall? A brother? A friend? Proceed. Stop! A Grey Warden. This man is innocent of the crimes laid before him. Orders were given and he followed them like any good soldier. He should not die for that mistake. Then find me the man who gave the order. Blackwall! No. I am not Blackwall. I never was Blackwall. Warden Blackwall is dead. And has been for years. I assumed his name to hide like a coward from who I really am. You, after all this time. It's over. I'm done hiding. I gave the order. The crime is mine. I am Tom Rainier. I didn't take Blackwall's life. I traded his death. He wanted me for the Wardens, but there was an ambush. Darkspawn. He was killed. I took his name to stop the world from losing a good man. But a good man, the man he was, wouldn't have let another die in his place. Saved that man. That took courage. Courage? I killed innocent people. Destroyed Mornay's life and the lives of others like him. One moment of courage will not make up for that. Why are you here? I needed you to know you aren't alone in this. Don't you understand? I gave the order to kill Lord Callier, his entourage. And I lied to my men about what they were doing. When it came to light, I ran. Those men, my men, paid for my treason while I was pretending to be a better man. This is what I am. A murderer, a traitor, a monster. I know you're more than what you say. Have some faith in yourself. Yes. Who were you before this mess? I was a captain in the Orlesian army. Well regarded, respected. But it wasn't enough. One mistake. One mistake and everything I worked for fell apart. The man on the gallows, Mornay. Who was he? My second in command. He was a good man. When I heard he'd been caught, I was resolved to stop his execution. Couldn't let another die for my mistake. I need to know the details of what you did, who you killed, why. I betrayed the Empire and assassinated a general, Ulf Gold. The man was General Vincent Callier. My employer was a Chevalier, Robert Chapuis. 
Sir Robert believed that Grand Duke Gaspard was the rightful ruler of Orlais and would eventually take the throne. He thought that by eliminating one of Selene's loyal supporters, he might endear himself to the true Emperor. I can't say if Robert's plan would have worked. I didn't care. There was good coin offered, and I took it. By the time Sir Robert's involvement was uncovered, I was long gone. Of course, the Grand Duke disavowed any knowledge of the act and publicly condemned it. Robert killed himself. Poison in his wine. Another victim of the great game. You got your men to help you. What did you tell them? They didn't know who they were attacking. I told them it was an important mission. They trusted me without question. Just as your men trust you. Our men follow me because they believe our cause is righteous. They believe it because that's what you tell them. My reports say that Callier was with his family. You had them all slaughtered? I didn't know Callier would be traveling with his family. I assumed only soldiers, armed guards. My men have been told to eliminate everyone. They'd seen war. They thought they were defending their country. No one likes to think about that. But it's names that carry power in this world. Bloodlines. Heirs. No matter how leaders like Selene or Gaspard pretend the game is played, that's how real war is waged. That shouldn't be how wars are fought. There's no need. War is unfair. And the sky is blue. But you're right. There was no need for what I did. That's all for now. I have Liliana's report on Tom Rainier. Give me the overview. Looks like our friend was once a respected captain in the Imperial Orlesian army. Before the Civil War, he was turned, persuaded to assassinate one of Selene's biggest supporters. He led a group of fiercely loyal men on this mission and told them nothing of it. His men took the fall for him. A few lucky ones, like Mornay, managed to escape. This is helpful, or at least educational. Don't blame yourself. We all made this mistake. <sighs> what do we do now? Black Wolf... Renier has accepted his fate. But you don't have to. We have resources. If he's released to us, you may pass judgment on him yourself. If it were up to you, what would happen? What he did to the men under his command was unacceptable. He betrayed their trust. Betrayed ours. I despise him. Yet he fought as a warden, joined the Inquisition, gave his blood for our cause. And the moment he shakes off his past, he turns around and owns up to it. Why? He wanted to change. To prove that he'd really left his past behind, he had to face up to it. Saving Mornay the way he did took courage. I'll give him that. But I can't tell you what to do. Have Rainier released to us. We must move quickly. We can explore our options back at Skyhold. For judgment this day, Inquisitor, I must present Captain Tom Rainier, formerly known to us as Warden Blackwall. His crimes... Well, you are aware of his crimes. The decision of what to do with him is yours. I didn't think this would be easy, but it's harder than I thought. Another thing to regret. Using your ties to the Underworld to free me. You're a criminal, same as me. The world will learn how you've used your influence. They'll know the Inquisition is corrupt. Once the world is back to normal, no one will even remember this. I'll remember. I accepted my punishment. I was ready for all this to end. Why would you stop it? What becomes of me now? 
you have your freedom. It cannot be as simple as that. It isn't. You're free to atone as the man you are, not the traitor you thought you were or the warden you pretended to be. The man I am. I barely know him. But he... I... have a lot to make up for. If my future is mine, then I pledge it to the Inquisition. My sword is yours. If I'd said anything less, would an arrow from the rookery have snuffed me like a candle? Take your pose, Tom Rainier. The war in Olay has claimed too many lives. I pray that it's over for good. How shall I refer to you? Rainier or Blackwall? I've gotten used to Blackwall. Perhaps we could treat it as less of a name and more of a title. Almost like Inquisitor. Reminds me of what I ought to be. Everyone needs something to aspire to. Exactly. I'm glad you understand. I appreciate the warning, but you shouldn't have come yourself. What if the guild found out, or... What's his name? Are you worrying for me or for yourself? A little of column A, a little of column B. I am the expendable one, after all. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll protect you. We'll just have to... Well, this is a surprise. You're the Inquisitor, right? Bianca Davry, at your service. Your name is Bianca? It's a common name. Half the girls in the Merchant's Guild are named Bianca. The other half are named Helga. I lucked out. I take it you're a friend of Varric's. Who isn't a friend of Varric's? You have met him before, right? Any friend of Varric's is welcome here. Be careful saying things like that. Some of his friends you don't want to meet. Well, maybe you do. Who am I to judge? Bianca's got a lead on where Corypheus got his red lyrium. The site of Bartrand's folly, the tag Varric found, has been leaked. There's a deep roads entrance crawling with strange humans carting out red lyrium by the handful. How do we know they're not using multiple entrances to get to the Taig? Navigating the deep roads isn't like the surface. There's no accurate maps of the whole system, and there are cave-ins, dark spawn, lava floods. If you find a route that gets where you're going, you don't deviate. Trying to find another way could be deadly. Who could have given away the Taig's location? There were a few people who knew. Hirelings from the expedition, a couple of close friends. How they found out isn't important. What matters is we know where they are now. If it's such a secret, how do you know about it, Bianca? I told her. Right after the expedition, I wrote and told Bianca what we found. I had artifacts that needed buyers, and she had more contacts that would pay for them. Plus, I owed her. You can get there from Orlais? It's a long way to the free marches. The deep roads are all connected, or they used to be. Collapses and such, some of them on purpose. They really are roads. They spanned the Dwarven Empire, went to every corner of the continent, maybe further. In theory, you can get to any Taig using the deep roads, but in practice, well, there's a reason nobody uses them anymore. We need to deal with this. As long as he has this source, Corypheus is that much more powerful. I couldn't agree more. I'll keep an eye on their operation. If you're interested in shutting it down, you've got my help. Try not to leave me waiting too long, Varric. I've got my own work to do, you know. Right. That's not going to be trouble at all. Let me know when you want to head to the entrance. Finally. I started to think you weren't coming. Nobody said you had to hang out in the creepy cave while you waited. Well, I did wait, so let's make this quick. These idiots are carrying the Red Lyrium out in unprotected containers. We don't want to stick around long enough for to start talking to us. Why would the containers need to be protected? Lyrium is incredibly dangerous in its raw form. It can poison or kill dwarves, and we're resistant to it. Sometimes it just explodes. No warning. 
Basically, only crazy people mine lyrium. The mining cast doesn't just sling it into a bucket. It's carried in special containers that keep it under control. And that's normal lyrium. The red stuff is worse. I wouldn't be surprised if most of their miners die just digging it up. You seem to know more about the effects of red lyrium than most. Varric told me plenty about what it did to him. And his brother. How did you find this operation in the first place? There must be hundreds of Deep Roads entrances. I've used this entrance in the past. Varric's not the only surface dwarf to explore the Deep Roads. Oh, I've got to admit, I was pretty surprised when I came here and found it full of humans. We'd better get to work. Sounds good to me. I built these doors. They probably shut this one from the other side when they heard the ruckus we were making. Ta-da! You've been here often enough to renovate the cave? You already know I've used this entrance in the past. I don't know if Varric's told you, but the Merchant's Guild is cutthroat. Literally. I built the doors to keep rivals from following me down here and arranging accidents. I guess it's a good thing you came along then. I get that a lot. After you. There you are. I won't be able to use this entrance again. Bianca. You want to say something, Varric? Andraste ass, Bianca. You're the leak? When I got the location, I went and had a look for myself. And I found the red lyrium, and I... studied it. You know what it does to people. I was doing you a favor. You want to know how this stuff works just as much as I do. I just... wanted to figure it out. How did you go from studying red lyrium to giving the location to Corypheus? I found out that red lyrium... It has the blight, Varric. Do you know what that means? What? The two deadly things combined to form something super awful? Lyrium is alive. Or something like it. Blight doesn't infect minerals, only animals. I couldn't get any further on my own, so I looked for a Grey Warden mage. Blight and magical expertise in one, right? And I found this guy, Lorias. He seemed really interested in helping my research. So I gave him a key. Lorias? He was the Grey Warden we met in Corypheus's... Oh, shit. I knew something seemed off. I didn't realize until you said you found Red Lyrium at Haven. I came here and, well, then I went to you. That name means something to you, Varric? He was at the Grey Warden prison where we found Corypheus. And he definitely wasn't a mage before. You had to know we'd figure out what happened, Bianca. Why did you insist on coming with us? Varric told me what people were doing with the Red Lyrium. I had to help make this right. You couldn't have known what would happen. Mafarath's bald, she couldn't. I told her exactly how bad this shit was. I told her to keep away from it. I know I screwed up, but we did fix it. It's as right as I can make it. This isn't one of your machines. You can't just replace a part and make everything right. No, but I can try, can't I? Or am I supposed to wallow in my mistakes forever, kicking myself? Telling stories of what I should have done? Ha! As if I would tell stories about my own mistakes. Oh, for pity's sake, would you two just get a room? Sorry, Inquisitor. We've done all we can here. Bianca, you'd better get home before someone misses you. Varric. Don't worry about it. Get him killed, and I'll feed you your own eyeballs, Inquisitor. I'm glad to have answers, but... Shit! The second she showed up here, I knew. I just... I let this mess happen. I gave her the tig. I am not good at dealing with shit like this. I don't think anyone is equipped any better than you are. No, no, the point is... I don't. I don't deal with things. 
If Cassandra hadn't dragged me here, I'd be in Kirkwall right now, pretending none of this was happening. You know that's not true. You've worked as hard as any of us to stop Corypheus. Is that true? I don't even know anymore. Thank you for your help back there. After all this, do you think you'll see Bianca again? I always do.